Hey everybody, hope you're doing well. My name is David Wilkerson and this is Surplus Funds 101. Um, first off, just want to start off by saying thank you for all the people who hit that like button, subscribe to the channel. And if you haven't done it, do it. You guys, I've been in the uh, creative real estate and asset recovery space now for over a decade. Okay, I've done thousands of transactions and on this channel, I give you all of my top tricks and tips and little ninja things that I've discovered, created and modeled over the past 10 years, you know, while I've been a one man show for the longest time, I didn't have employees or anything like that. It was just a one man show, but um, I give them to you here and I don't charge you. So do me a favor and hit that like and subscribe button and mean a lot. But today I just wanted to talk to you guys about closing deals. Okay. I pay attention to all the comments that are left down in the um, comment box below and all the support tickets and things like that. And one of the things that comes up a lot is people want to know how to close deals. Okay. They want to know what the magic bullet is, the unicorn. Okay. And I'm here to tell you guys that there is no unicorn. There's no magic bullet. Um, there's nothing like that. You know, you guys overcomplicate the process of closing transactions way, way, way more than you need to. Okay. You overcomplicate it to the point to where it immobilizes you and it, you, you're in fear of even taking action because you think you're going to screw something up. Okay. So, you know, my virtual assistants, myself, and we make about 400 phone calls a day, and I've been doing that for years. Okay. So I've learned a few things, you know, about closing transactions. I just want to share with you guys some mindset tips and some tricks that I've discovered throughout that time frame. Okay. And the very first thing is when it comes to closing deals, closers always ask. Okay. So let me elaborate on that. I'm very fortunate to have the peer group that I do right now. And one of my friends owns a call center and his call center, they sell high end coaching programs to people. So five to twenty five thousand dollars. OK, let me tell you how that works. So when it's three o'clock in the morning and you're in your underwear and you're watching TV and you're eating Cheetos and drinking fucking Mountain Dew. OK, and an infomercial pops up for let's say a real estate program where they have one big tip, one big secret they wanna share with you and you buy a course. Well, those leads immediately get shipped off to a call center and they call these people the very next day and they upsell them into a high ticket coaching program. So what happens is they get these leads, they make a phone call and 30 minutes later they get that person to whip their credit card out and make a very, very big purchase. And so my buddy, he's been doing this for over a decade, hundreds and hundreds of millions of dollars worth of these transactions. In my eyes, he's probably the best, probably the best salesperson I know. And for the longest time myself, I even um, would always ask him because I was wondering, I was like, dude, what's the secret? Like, how does this guy like get somebody to make that big of a purchase without knowing them um, in that short of amount of time, right? And so I'd always ask him, I'm like, hey, what, what's the secret? If you could like boil down your entire sales experience into one piece of advice, what would it be? And he always would say this, he says, David, closers always ask. And for a while, like I didn't know what he was talking about, you know? And I was like, dude, what's this mean? But you know, like the more I've been in sales and he told me this a decade ago, um, you know, the longer I'm in sales, the more transactions I do, the more this just re-solidifies and surfaces because you guys, you don't have to have a fancy one liner, a fancy one liner that makes up for like less than probably 2% of the overall transactions that I do. You can't build a predictable business on unicorns. Okay. Now, when it comes to always asking one of the, a great example of this is if you ever watch any Grant Cardone's content. Okay. Grant Cardone, I don't think I've ever watched anything he's ever produced and put out on Instagram or on Facebook or on YouTube without him at the very end of whatever he's saying or talking about says, hey, if you want this, click on this. If you want this, click on this. By the way, you guys, if you want my free calling script, why don't you just go in the comments section below, click on the link below and take advantage of it. Okay, so what he does is he makes a lot of offers. Okay, so when it comes to closing these deals, all you have to do is just summarize the conversation and at the very end say, hey, would it be okay if I sent you out the paperwork and tomorrow we had a notary come by or would Friday work better? 
You know, like you just got to get good at making a lot of offers because your contact rate and your offer rate are way more important than these little clever one liners. The clever one liners aren't going to pay your bills. Okay. That's what it's going to take you guys. Closers always ask. Okay. Just make a little note of that in your head, dude. Whenever you get done talking, whatever it is you're talking about. Okay. Always just toss an offer out because <laughs> when it comes to this business, you know, there's going to be people that are going to work with you and there's going to be people that aren't going to work with you. There's more of them that aren't going to want to work with you than that will. But you'll never know that unless you just ask them. Because if you don't ask, you never can receive. So closers always ask. That's the most important thing. Now, I'm not saying be reckless and don't have any intention. Like, obviously, when you're talking to people, have some urgency behind what you say. Hey, is it okay if we send you the documents out tomorrow? Hey, if I do this, can we do this? And, and, and kind of communicate like that. But always make offers, you guys. Now, the second thing is you're going to get paid in life on your performance, not a clever one-liner. Okay, let me elaborate on that. When you look at celebrities or actors, they're some of the highest paid individuals on planet Earth. You want to know why? Because they're very good at getting themselves in a state and transferring emotion to the person that's watching TV to get them happy, to, you know, um, keep them in a good mood, whatever it might be, you know, like they get paid on their performance. So how this correlates to you is you have a script, a calling script. And it's in the link below. Go ahead, grab it. It's the one I use. You, know, you can use it too if you don't have one. But they have a script. And that script, <clears throat> they've gotten very good at talking about the script, you know, like getting into the theatrics, the theatrics of the script. Okay, that is what's important. Okay, like I always, uh, here in town, they have, oh, God, I. A little brain fart, but every summer they have an outdoor amphitheater um, where they have people doing these performances. And like when you think about making a performance, like it's not that physical, it's not that much of a physical workout, it's a mental workout. Like, have you guys ever noticed when you're making your phone calls that after the uh, at the very end of like a three hour calling script, like you are mentally fried? Like that means you are putting in that work and you are putting on a good performance. So from the time somebody picks up the phone, you guys, it's very, very important that it's on, that you're ready to go and you're ready to have good engaging conversations with people. Okay. So you're going to get paid on your performance. So get good at reading the script, you know, read the script 10 times every day before you um, get on the phone, you know, walk around your house and say like you're like at a high school performance or like you're at a play. You know, like you're going to get paid on your performance, you know, so study the basics and get good at communicating them. Now, the third thing, okay, people are always worried about cancellations. Oh my God, Dave, what happens if somebody cancels on me? Well, you know, I'm here to tell you guys that cancellations aren't always a bad thing. Okay. Let me explain. And I'm going to use a little scenario with two of my virtual assistants a few months ago. Okay. Both of them were given the exact same amount of leads every single week, right? One of them had a two a week average and nobody ever canceled or closed, right? Um, nobody ever canceled, I mean. The other person, they had about a six or seven a week average, but two of them canceled. Now, let's just do the reverse on the math here. Who's in a better spot at the end of the week? Because it doesn't matter if a deal cancels or if you sell somebody. What matters is the number that's on the board you know, what your net number is. So the person that had two cancel every single week, you know, they ended up with four transactions, not two. So they made more money, you know, because when it comes down to cancellations, like if you have too many cancellations, you're, you're being aggressive, okay? You're being aggressive, you're being pushy, and too many people are canceling, you know, because like you, you're really pushing it on people. But if you don't have any cancellations at all, you're probably not maximizing the amount of leads that you have in front of you as far as how many deals you can get and conduct. Okay. So when you guys have a cancellation that pops up, don't think like it's the end of the world. Okay. Cause it's not, you know, like when a cancellation arises, you know, just take it for what it is. Just understand like you can't ever have a large volume of sales come in without it. You know, like I'd think something's off if you never had a cancellation. So just factor that into your expenses. And another thing too, 
a cancellation is probably going to take place immediately after you close somebody. So you aren't going to have to have the expense of a notary. Usually if somebody cancels, you'll know about that before. So you're just going to be lost time. But with that being said, you guys, that's all I got for you. Go rip the fucking head off the world and go take advantage of every deal you can. Go get loaded. And that's it.